All right, Salim Rezaia here again, and we're still sticking to DKA. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I go about replacing potassium based on the patient I have in front of me. So the important thing here is that insulin therapy, which we use as one of the mainstays of treatment for DKA, also happens to be one of the treatments for hyperkalemia. And so as we give patients insulin therapy, what we do is we activate this sodium potassium ATPase pump, where we push potassium in and push uh, sodium out of the cell. And so what we'll ultimately end up causing is more hypokalemia in our patients, and then we have to stop the insulin drip, and then we have to replace the potassium, and it becomes this big nightmare. So I'd like to keep things simple. And what I basically do is I put people into three buckets. What is their serum potassium? And based on that serum potassium, if they have a functioning gut, can I give them oral potassium? how much IV potassium, and then is it time to start the insulin infusion? So the first category is the easiest, potassium greater than five. In these patients, I don't give them any oral or IV potassium, and you're basically safe to start your insulin drip. The second category is also pretty simple, potassium less than 3.5. I'm super aggressive with these patients. I'll give them 40 milliequivalents by mouth, and then depending on the IV access I have and the pain tolerance of the patient, I'll go all the way up to 40 milliequivalents for that patient. Now, oftentimes hospital policies or peripheral IVs will not allow it to go at the higher range. And so sometimes you'll have to do 20, but oral is a very effective way of replacing potassium. And basically at this point, I don't start insulin infusion. And then there's this middle category, potassiums of 3.5 to 5. I will actually still replace potassium in these patients. I will give 20 milliequivalents orally and then 10 to 20 IV. And I will start the insulin infusion with the thought that as I start my insulin infusion, I'm going to start shifting potassium down. And so I want to stay on top of that so I don't fall into that third category. So here's the three categories. Again, I like to keep it simple. It's all based on what the patient's serum potassium is. And then you can decide what amount of potassium you want to give orally, IV, and whether it's safe to start that insulin infusion. Let me know your thoughts and comments. Thanks for tuning in.